stepfather um, physically and emotionally abused me as a child. Um, a memory that comes back to my mind time and again is from was about five or six. I had gotten in trouble at school, small things like uh, stepping out of line, talking out of turn, pretty normal stuff for a five-year-old. When I got home, he made me stand outside my t-shirt until I could remember all the things that I had done. It was October in Montana. Um, I wrote everything down and memorized it. Now I don't remember. <laughs> uh, of the three things that I had done, I could only remember two. So there I stood. I remember being so cold, I would lay down on the ground with my arms inside my t-shirt, trying to stay warm. Every time that he saw me, he would come out, he'd kick me in the ribs and uh, yell at me to stand up. Uh, when it became obvious that I couldn't remember the three things that I had done, he, he released me, but he told me I had to eat outside first. He filled with dog food, and he told me that he could do their errors. Because I didn't, that must make me an animal. And I was going to like one. He made me get on the ground and eat from the bowl like a dog. My faith and spirit were broken. Because the day it, I started to turn my back on God. After all, if he were so loving and kind, how could he allow such evil to happen to a little boy? I began to shut myself off from everybody. At the age of eight, I discovered pornography. I found that it could numb me from the pain I felt. And while it allowed me to avoid the anguish, it numbed every facet of my life. My relationship suffered. I had very few of what I considered true friends, but because of my inability to let them in, they never truly knew me. I became a manipulator, a deceiver, a chameleon. I was able to walk among everyone as if I was perfectly normal, but I was anything but. I was completely dead inside. As the years went on, my pornography use got worse, the subject matter got darker, and the frequency increased. My first marriage failed, whether from my use of porn or my inability to connect, I'm not entirely sure, but my moral bankruptcy certainly played a large role. Fast forward to this last November, and my wife discovered videos on my phone. It wasn't the first time. And it certainly, you know, she made it clear that it was the last. And she wanted me to move out. I refused and denied what she had found for several days. But then I, this voice inside was telling me that if I didn't make a change, like a real change, that I would lose everything I ever loved. That I might still lose it, but this would be my only opportunity to turn things around. I confessed to my wife that I had an addiction and I needed help. I began a 12-step program that set me along a spiritual path. I admitted that I was powerless over my addiction. And that my life had become unmanageable. And that through the stories of others, I started to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. I began attending church every week, and I had attended church periodically over the years, but I typically thought it was a waste of time or I picked up the message from a secular perspective. But something funny started to happen. I began to hear God. It was as if he was speaking directly to me and my situation. The day I made the decision to give my life to Jesus was completely unexpected. We had begun the Faith Under Pressure series highlighting the book of David, and I completely broke down when I heard Pastor Charlie sum things up with these words. Most of the wounds we carry in life come from a time when we were unfaithful to God, or someone else was unfaithful to God, or someone close to us was unfaithful to God, and I, it suddenly clicked. God had never abandoned me. Some of the people in my life who were supposed to take care of me had abandoned God and therefore me. He had been with me every step of the way, inviting me back into his embrace. I could see countless times where he had opened the door for me and I had slammed it shut in his face because I was busy playing God in my own life. I had people that 
loved me and then spurred me on to be a better person. God was using them to bring me back to him. In that moment, I stopped trying to play God in my own life, and I let him take the world. I gave up the creative metamorphosis within me. Psalms 31 says, whoever heeds life-giving correction will get him among the wise. I am heeding the correction that has been made, and it is indeed giving life. I have yet to see if God will bless me to be among the wise. The changes that ex- the acceptance of Jesus have brought in my life in a short period of time are numerous and profound. I am beginning to let people in. I actively push myself toward the difficult conversations because it's precisely what I don't want to do. I can feel God in those moments. I'm developing the ability to use honest words and have a tender heart with people. I communicate with grace. I'm transforming into a more loving and supportive husband and father by following the principles of Jesus. Despite these changes, I also realize that I have a very long and difficult road of continuing sobriety ahead, but I can and will be successful if I remain humble, work actively to kill my pride, and put my faith and trust in Jesus. I'd like to thank my friends and family and all of you for being present and bearing witness to this testimony. I'm sure many of you thought this day would never come, and to be honest, I didn't either. It's as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. I would especially like to thank my wife for being the mouthpiece of God, always chipping away our existence to Him, showing me a better way through the always wanting more for me and voicing the belief that I can become a better man for Christ. Thank you. Josh, and uh, I had a whole thing written out, but I'm, I don't have it. I'm just going to go forward. I grew up uh, in a super uh, good Jesus following home. Um, I was baptized when I was a child, baby. And most of my 20s, I just completely rebelled against Jesus. And I chose my own path. Uh, I knew there was something much bigger out there, but uh, just chose to kind of do my own thing for many years uh, from all types of things. I was in and out of churches and all kinds of stuff. Um, 2012, I went on a Basically, he started working in me tremendously for quite a few years. I still fought it. I didn't want to kind of do what it was. I felt him asking me to do. I still wanted to do my own things, but then I chose to just listen and follow him. And I kind of, I did. I left everything Josh had worked towards to follow what Jesus was asking me to do. I ended up in Bozeman. I have so many amazing people in my life that there should be a million people baptizing me in this water, but um, I am very thankful for family, friends, mentors that have helped me just grow uh, in my faith over the last quite a few years. Um, So I've been following Jesus for quite a few years, but uh, I'm kind of making the commitment to just publicly declare that Jesus is real. I'm so stoked to move forward with him on everything he's asking me to do. It's a recommitment. Um, that, you know, Jesus wasn't, Jesus was baptized, you know, in his 30s. And when he did that is when things really opened up and he got to go out and speak into the world. And I feel like God is asking a lot of myself and get to do this for my wife too, it's pretty awesome. Um, he's asking a lot of us to move forward with, for him in different missions fields and stuff, so just recommitting and like, you know, there's been many years of uh, living in sin. Basically just, I, 
asking Jesus to wash anything away that might be holding you back from moving forward with some bigger choices and things that he's asking you to do. Um, yeah. Is that good? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Lauren Skoglin. My husband, Josh. We're getting baptized today. And um, it's just, it's been so neat um, making this decision together because we both have been walking in our faith for many years now, and I was baptized as a teenager. Um, and, and after that, a few years after that, I just really struggled um, walking in my faith. I really struggled with trusting in God and the cares of the world and um, probably a lot of projecting hurts and pains I had onto God just really ended up... Um, I just ended up in a place where I did live in rebellion for many years, and probably about 12 years, <clears throat> I was up and down with my faith. I really wanted to have a relationship with Jesus. I felt him pursuing me, but I could not feel that I could trust him, and so, um, you know, in those years, I definitely, as Charlie was talking, you know, I definitely chose to play God. I felt like I knew better than God how to how to live life, and um, gosh, towards the end of all that, I really started to just be broken down, like, I was really, like, struggling, and I was about, I think it was almost 30, I was about 30 when I met Josh, and Josh, um, he told me that he had had a very similar story as well, kind of a similar path I had, and I remember him telling me that he made a choice he made a decision to give his life to God and fully commit and something in me just clicked and I I knew that I needed and wanted that as well and over all of those years that I felt God pursuing me it's a beautiful thing to look back and realize what I needed to know the most was that he really loved me and I remember learning to, to let Jesus in again um and realizing that over all those years, God continuously had kept telling me through people and just even in my spirit, these words would come into my mind from time to time. I will never leave you or forsake you. Um, I, I've loved you with an unconditional love, an everlasting love. And it was something that I never really experienced um, in, the, in the world. So it was very hard for me to allow myself to believe that it was true. But God was relentless in pursuing me over those years. It eventually clicked when I met Josh that he really, truly was the solid rock that I could put my life on and um, trust. And so a few years after that, um, I moved out to both of them. And, um, um, I've been walking with God now for a few years. I had experienced a lot of healing, but I have still was experiencing um, very anxious and, not, and still having a lot of fear in my life. And then that was when I met Kay Stelter and the Stelter family. And through her example, Kay, and I know God brought them into my life to bring me uh, to a place of more freedom. But through her example, I got to see Proverbs 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. And by seeing that in her, I started to grow and I began to develop um, more freedom in my walk with the Lord. And so... Today we're here to, <clears throat> as Josh said, to separate. Um, I want to repent from the years that I lived in rebellion, separate from that. And um, Jesus says to us that we didn't choose him, he chose us. And so because I am chosen by Jesus, I want to publicly say that I now choose him. super nervous um and i'm going to get emotional um so my name is Kelly. this is my husband bradley my kid over here Wow, and charlie charlie's deaf and he loves the beach so he doesn't understand why he's in the water right now um but um i guess i'll start with um when i was younger i had no family.
foundation to stand on. I was very easily led this way or that. Um, and I did have some good friends who led me to youth group, and I, I felt the Holy Spirit, and I was baptized at 14. Um, unfortunately, after that, um, after that, the, the devil does what he does, and he led me astray. I, I fell into addictions of uh, drug and alcohol use and smoking cigarettes and um, fell into abusive relationships. And that continued on until I met Bradley um, and he showed me my worth. Uh, at that time, I took an interest in witchcraft and occult practices. Um, my interest turned into a study my study turned into a practice, and my practices turned into worshiping um, a deity I called Goddess, um, which I now know was a complete deception. Um, I had absolutely crazy things happening around me, and I just wanted to understand it so badly that I thought I needed to dive deep into this to gain understanding and gain control of my life. Little did I know that that was what was causing these things to come to me. Um, on New Year's, New Year's Eve of 2020, my husband was exposed to COVID at work um, and he was fired from his job for not coming in the next day. Um, we both became very sick, but I did not recover. I, um, had shingles, uh, things were going very badly for me. And um, being a practicing witch, you know, I was used to getting intuitions. I was practicing divination and I have intuitions, but I remember feeling something very different about this intuition telling me to look into thyroid disease. And I believe that was God showing me that I had thyroid disease and that's why I wasn't recovering. Um, during this time, um, because my husband, lost his job, we fell behind on our bills. Um, we ended up leaving our home because we realized it was infested with rats and inside the walls and falling from the ceiling in our children's room. There was um, rat feces and given my health, we decided that was not good. Um, we ended up traveling around looking for a place to land. Um, and our path ended up being manipulated by fires. Um, we tried to make our way west and we had to go south. We ended up uh, going through the uh, Nevada. I don't know if any of you have been to Nevada, but there's not much there. It's kind of uh, where we ran out of money. Um, we ended up in a place where had to reach out for help and I contacted my my dad um my mom and my dad and I was crying on the phone my dad and I was like you know what do you think about me because of this I just want you to know because my dad was Christian so I want you to know I've always held Jesus in my heart Jesus is my example in life and I I follow Jesus even though I practice witchcraft I I hold Jesus in my heart um after that you know my parents said well where would you like to land? Because we were running from things in Idaho, running from abuse of people, that, um, running from situations. And we, uh, we had traveled through Bozeman and we said, you know, let's go up to Bozeman, Montana. Um, and thank God that we are here. Um, there are so many, so many good reasons for us to be here. And I know that that was God's work in our life. Uh, we came up here and we lived out of our van for two months. Um, and some of you might remember that day in October where there was the snowstorm all of a sudden. Um, it was that day that I realized through my husband's influence, he had been reading the Bible and sharing his experiences with me. And it was that day, that snowstorm, that I realized that I was being deceived. I was not being guided. I was being deceived by um, the practices of divination and witchcraft. And I decided then that I would get rid of everything that I was believing and start over. Um, that night, we were staying in a hotel room and my husband woke up and said, there was a bright light in our hotel room. And I looked at my backpack and my witchcraft books were pulled out of my backpack as if something was saying these need to go. Um, 
five days later, I received a promotion and a raise and an award at work and we got a house and we got to move into a home after months of homelessness. And I knew that was God saying, you made the right choice. And since then, um, so many miracles have happened. My son has been um, nonverbal and not participating in sign language and now he, he will sign anything that I sign to him. He understands everything that I sign to him. Um, and that's the work of God and Jesus in our lives. Um, and I've been baptized before, but since then, I, through the practice of witchcraft, um, you know, I dedicated myself to this goddess that um, deceived me. And now I'm saying today that I dedicate this body and this life to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough act to follow. Um, my name is Patty Danusi, and woo, sorry. I'm emotional from the last one. Um, today, I'm up here with my husband, who is in Washington State. He was going to be here too, so he's on that other side of that camera watching. was baptized as a child, as a baby, and raised a really good life to, to make sure that I, that can go away. <laughs> we don't need that. Um, you know, I had all this stuff that I wanted to say, but what I found out um, about, see, we've been here for seven years in Bozeman. 2018, we were going to move into a home out in the Forks, and we were waiting for the sale to go through. And I remember that I was praying, and I told the Lord that if you wanted us to be here, we, we would be here. But if you don't want us to be at that home, we understand it, and we will abide by what you want. And we didn't get that home. So we waited back. And that was in, uh, whatever, it was three months later, um, I actually ended up in the hospital. And had I been out where I was, I probably would not have been able to be here because I would have been too far away from the hospital. So when God whispers to you, you need to listen. You have to, sometimes it's real quiet. And then uh, let's see, so the year before last, we met some amazing people, Joseph and Amy Ro Rowan, and they brought us to this church. They talk, told us, this is a great place, and we have been here almost a year, and it's not just a great place, it's phenomenal. We have, we have been loved, and we went and spent three weeks helping Joseph and Amy with their royal family kids and it's it's a camp for abused and neglected foster kids and when i've been listening i've listened to two adults that have gone through things as a child one was abuse and the other was her witchcraft while i was at that camp i was i asked I was drip, I drove into a town to pick up some children that needed to be at this camp. They needed to be there because they were rescuing. They needed to know that God was there with them. I had also, at the beginning of that year, found out that I had cancer. So I'm, I'm a really, I think I'm a pretty strong person. So what I also asked God was, I need to find a place where I, it can be quiet and I can hear you and I can follow and do the things that you need me to do. 
So when we got ready to go to camp, I had fatigue really bad. I had a really, really hard day, and I felt that I didn't know if I could do anything, but I was going to be there because I wanted to be there for those kids and not let them know that God's with them. And little did I know God was walking with me. He took me by the hand and he helped me get from my trailer at the bottom of the hill uphill so that I can serve and help them with their food and help them know that, that they're loved and that the life that they were living is not what they have. Thank you for what you said. I am going to continue with my life following that path. I want to help these children. I want them to know that God loves them. And I want all of you to know that you have to listen. You have to listen sometimes, even in the noise. Find that little quiet spot. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Let out that breath and pray and listen because God is always talking to you. He's always there for you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mindy Howe. This is my husband, Rob. I wrote it short and sweet. I've gone to quite a few churches in my life. Um, I like to I like to just talk that up to always path to God, no matter what. Um, not all of them have always stuck. I don't really have anybody um, as far as an influence until until I met my husband. So. <clears throat> We married after two years. Um, we had a daycare. Um, we always had parties and barbecues and everything was pretty wonderful. And then it wasn't so wonderful because alcohol just took control of our lives. And uh, my husband, he decided he was going to quit drinking. And he started doing some things that I didn't quite agree with because it was uncomfortable, it was out of character, and I was kind of happy with just being in my little hole, because I didn't have to deal with my life, or my past, or the person I am, and I, that I didn't really care for, but in, throughout my life, I have felt the Holy Spirit on several occasions, so I just, I know he's there, and I know he's always looked out for me. However, um, I'm sorry, not however, uh, <laughs> when Rob and I met, we were both on the same journey, and unfortunately, it was not a walk with Jesus. Him and I had been through quite a, quite a childhood, and I mean, I had a pretty good childhood. There was just some stuff that wasn't good that I let go. Um, so basically, we kind of comforted each other with our pain and... Um, also just drinking it out. So really, we weren't getting anywhere at all. So um, when things got really crazy, it led to Rob's recovery. His, he got sober nine months before me, he started going to Al-Anon. He did celebrate recovery at the church. And then he started a uh, Bible study with his good friends. And Oh my goodness. Uh, and they still go, they still do Bible study every Friday. So I started seeing all these small changes in him that spilled over to me, and it really started to open my eyes. He was giving me a lot more grace. He was just a completely different person in all of the most amazing ways. Um, I started asking him questions about. Uh, what was discussed in his study, and it started making me pretty thirsty. And so, and so, uh, it, that led me to watching The Chosen, and The Chosen just, my heart was just completely in it after that, because 
it really puts Jesus in a perspective of he's a person. He it, he makes mistakes just like we do. I mean, obviously, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> he had a sense of humor and um wow <laughs> oh my goodness okay anyways um so now when we go to church sunday um i do i do see a little lesson in every day that does make my daily life different one thing that that really sticks with me that i have to remind myself all the time is to be quick to listen and slow to speak Learning that is getting better every day. Um, we went from no prayers to praying sometimes to asking the Lord for answers and thanking him for what we have, praying at meals, praying for people we don't know. And he does answer prayers. He really, really is. He really is there. So... I look to God for my answers at every corner, and today I am so happy to have you and my family here to show my commitment with my walk with Jesus. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Bucagnoni, and this is my dad. Um, so I just and getting baptized today because I've decided to follow Christ and just be obedient in my walk with him um, and just share some of my testimony. Um, I'm very blessed to be able to say that I grew up in a Christian household and I have parents who have always just kept God in my life and helped me um, in my walk with him. Um, but for me, a big thing for me is that I've kept God a part of my life, but I've struggled with making him the center of my life. I feel like I've always let the end of my life trusting him and truly surrendering my life to him um, and that's why I'm here today because I understand that without him I would be nowhere where I am in my walk with him or in life in general um, and I think for me it's really easy to be kind of like prideful and think that I'm where I am because of because I've kept him in my life but I understand that I'm where I am because he chose to keep me and I'm so grateful for that because I don't do of his grace, his love, or self. Um, but I'm so grateful that he looks at me, even in my most sinful and fallen state, and he he offers his salvation to me, and he offers me freedom and peace, and I know I can trust him. He's shown me that more than ever, I think, this past year, um, and he's just shown me my true need for him, um, and so that's why I want to truly surrender my life to him and follow him all the days of my life, and that's why I'm getting baptized today, just to publicly say that I, I've accepted Jesus into my life truly, and I want to follow him. So. Hi, um, my name is Ryan, um, and, um, oh gosh, where do I start? Um, so I in a pretty broken household. Uh, my parents divorced early, um, and my dad lives across the country, so I didn't get to see him a lot uh, as a kid. Um, and the I didn't really grow up, I guess, with a good um, foundation because of that, because uh, my dad left. Um, and through all the super messy divorce and all of that stuff, um, I uh, my mom did the best that she could. Um, but having to um, fend for the both of us was really hard on her, um, and so a lot of times I ended up um, alone. Um, and so through that, uh, I didn't really know what love was, I guess. Like, I didn't really, uh, I didn't have people to connect with, um, and I was really angry um, because of my circumstances, um, and I found it really easy to blame myself for everything that had happened. Um, blame myself for my dad leaving and for my mom having to work so hard in order to support me um, and all of that. Um, and as she tried to um, get me to 
learn about God and learn about um, faith. Uh, I wanted nothing to do with it because um, I couldn't understand how um, how a God, how a higher power um, could be so cruel um, in making me such a failure that I, you know, my family is broken and it was my fault. Um, and so I went through life with that negative mindset that uh, everything that could go wrong would go wrong because of me um, and that my family was suffering because of me um, and um, fast forward through kind of a lot of that um, and turning all of that anger and that um, yeah all, all the anger uh, and the blame inwards on myself um, I decided it'd be better if I weren't around and it'd be a lot easier for my mom to not have to take care of somebody. Uh, and so when I was 16 years old, I attempted suicide. Um, obviously, it didn't work. I'm still here. Um, I, uh, I was really confused uh, for a long time. I wasn't sure why, um, why things had gone wrong uh, or gone right, I guess, if you look at it from a better perspective. Um, <laughs> Um, but I was real confused. I was like, I, you know, why didn't it work? Um, I won't go into too much detail, um, but I looked up the statistics and I had a one in 300,000 chance of making it. And I did. Um, and I was kind of crazy reflecting. I was like, whoa, um, there's got to be a reason for that. Um, and so for a little while, um, I just kind of drifted along with the current, kind of trying to see where I'd end up. Um, and last minute, my senior year of high school, I applied for college here at MSU, um, and I got accepted. Uh, and so I moved out here to Bozeman uh, a year ago, and um, God put some really incredible people in my life um, to help me cope with a lot of the things um, that I blamed myself for in the past that I really had no control over and weren't my fault, um, and show me that, um, you know, God isn't this cruel you know, person who looks down on the world and lets things happen as they happen, uh, but that he, w he really was working in my life. Uh, and there's a reason that I've gone through what I have. Um, and I'm thankful for the person that I've become because of it. Uh, as hard as it is to, to look back on some of the things of the past, um, but realizing that God loves me and I have people around me that love me um, was hard to accept, but unnecessary thing. Um, so I spent the last year going to Bible studies, going to church, learning as much as I can um, about the God that loves me. Um, and he's done some really incredible things in my life and turned a whole lot of things around. Um, I've been able to repair relationships um, with my dad uh, and with my stepdad, who I treated awfully because I, you know, um, you know, I didn't want anybody around me um, to, I, I didn't want to be a burden to anybody, so I pushed everyone away. Um, and being able to repair those relationships, um, knowing that God loves me, and knowing that those people have loved me for all the way um, And although I'm a little bit nervous, um, I'm really happy to be able to dedicate my life to Christ, um, knowing that he's had my back the whole time um, and that I know there is a, there's a reason uh, for everything that's happened um, and that I can hopefully use my story and my testimony um, to help other people someday. Thank you. My name is Sophia, and um, I've always been a firm believer of God. I was baptized a few months old, um, but I also grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Um, my dad was an alcoholic, and we practically raised ourselves. My mom was never home. She always worked, and you know, a lot of things happened to us, a lot of traumatic things growing up. And So I started drinking at the age of 13, and... 
throughout my life, I did what I wanted. My mom was never around. And um, I also um, had a thought like unloved and I had a suicide in my mind all the time. And I really didn't want to live. Um, I didn't care about life at all. I got married at 16, divorced at 19. And ever since um, then from 20, from 2003 to 2008, I lived in my life in sin. I drank a lot, I used drugs, and I didn't really care what situation I got myself into. Um, I got with the father of my children, and I was with them for nine years, but it was a very domestic violent relationship. Like we, he would hit me, he would beat on me, he would not just physically, emotionally, mentally, like, I literally was saying sorry for things I never did. And um, February of 2017, I had the courage to leave him. And um, I, me and my three children moved. But I fell back into alcohol and drugs. And I'm a very belief from believer. When you ask God, he gives. Right? And now, so that's why I'm also... I have fear because I, I he's answered a lot of my prayers and showed me with my parents because they almost what, my mom almost died in 2012 and I prayed really hard one night and you know the next day she was like the doctor was like we don't know what you guys did but your mom's a miracle and it's like prayer and um so it's like when I just separated from the father of my children I was like. I was seeing my children and I was dragging them with me and I was all like, God, do something, help me out, you know? So it's like, that's why I say, like, be careful because what happened next was I had caught a CPS case and my children were removed. So, um, August of 2017, I got sober again and, um, I never really been like into the religion, into the religion or stuff like praying or anything like okay god he helped me out okay i got what i wanted and what i did was turn my back again on him again um but in october of 2020 um everything shut down and i didn't know what to do so i ended up going back to alcohol and again my children were removed from my care and i literally had no desire to live um i was putting myself in bad situations and i was like damn like really like I guess I'm not, God doesn't even want me because I'm still here, you know? And it's, I really felt unworthy. And um, I got married, jumped into a marriage with um, my husband. And it's like, I just went along to as what life brought. And in February of this year, we got pulled over. We're moving to Illinois. And by the grace of God, I guess he got tired of me asking to do something. And, I ended up in jail, and I, and I was so mad. I was so mad. I pointed at my finger, yelling at him, telling him, "Why did you do this to me? I, you know, I, I look, you know, I don't do nothing bad. I don't harm nobody. Yeah, I harm my children." And from walking away, and you know, I was just so mad and and angry. And then I got to Bozeman, and like I was still like. Why isn't why aren't you answering my prayers? But yeah, well, I haven't even prayed once. And um, finally, I, in March, I was like, okay, God. I got to my knees and I said, what what do I need to do? I give up. I give you all. Like take away what's holding me back. And by the grace of God, a few weeks later, I I get um an interview with Linda, and she was like. So I got accepted to the Lindsay house and I, she was just telling me about the structure and it's um, Christian base. And I was like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, I can do it, you know, like. And then I get here and it's like, okay, God, um, what do I need to do? And I've been doing everything I gotta do. And and it's like, I, I go to church, I do what I gotta do. I read in the mornings. Well, I'm lying, yeah, not every morning. I try, <laughs> I try. Um, uh, I do what I gotta do. I, I've been discipled by a wonderful lady, and um, I'm getting to learn more about the Bible. And literally, my Bible has like, so many scriptures highlighted on it 
that I'm like, okay, every time I think about something, it's like, God, what do I need to do? And everything, something is like, something is like, I know that's miracles. And um, one lady told me, um, stop focusing in the future and focus in the present because you'll miss every day God's miracles. And I've been doing that. And even before when they're talking about the baptisms, I was like, should I get baptized? I've already been baptized, you know, like, so I've asked and I've been, they gave me confirmation and stuff and I was like, okay, um, is it what I need to do? So what's, what I need to do? And I kept praying about it and it kept popping up and it kept popping up and it kept popping up and I was like, okay, I get it. I need to get baptized. Uh, the old me has died. And how can I show God that I'm willing to follow him and follow Jesus? And this was it. So I'm, this is why I'm here right now, to get baptized and celebrate the, that I've been reborn. I'm Emily, um, and I grew up in addiction um, and around a lot of like violence. Um, I didn't have anyone to like guide me uh, through life because our parents didn't take care of us. So I just kind of like, ran around the neighborhood and um, never like was taught like how to appropriately like handle my emotion or how to like interact with other people um, and I was taken away from my parents when I was 10 years old and I was adopted um, and the family that adopted me was just they weren't very like they were like really um, abusive kind of like with the God stuff like they were like you're going to hell all the time, you know, and like everything I did, they just were like this. So they really kind of like, I knew God wasn't like that, but it just made me like not want to go to church and things like that. And then um, I got taken away from them and I grew up in um, like facilities for kids because I was just really aggressive and angry and um stubborn so there was like not really anything anyone could do to contain me so that's like the situations i ended up in which like i just didn't know we and then people didn't realize that um and then i came back to montana and my family was still really in their addiction and i was a very like violent person because i didn't want people i didn't want anyone to get close to me and so like I figured if people were scared of me, then they would stay away from me, but really I was scared of people. Um, and then I remember in, sorry, in 2014, um, my addiction was just so bad. And uh, I remember just like nothing could uh, take it away. Like my sadness, like there was nothing that would relieve it, even like using or drinking. Um, and like I had a dream that was like, it was just so, happy and peaceful and I had a daughter in my dream um and then I think it was like a couple months later I was pregnant with my first child um and my family because of the choices I was making like everyone turned against me like I I went through a lot while I was pregnant and um I remember a church threw a baby shower for me and the lady was like I've never seen so many people show up at a baby shower and then um after i had my daughter like she told me that like god gives people gifts they don't deserve sometimes and i just like remember like my daughter changed my whole life um for a long time like i didn't suffer with addiction and stuff like that but then i turned my eyes away from god again and i was started using again um i lost my children um one of them was abused by a babysitter and i remember i was just like completely broken again um, and I had so much guilt from what happened to my daughter and God like showed me that, you know, I've forgiven, like, I, I don't need to like be so, so angry with myself. Um, and then again, I got back into my addiction after I, my children, I got my children back and I met Linda. Um, I came to the Lindsay house, I think it was like a week and I was like, I'm better now, I can leave. Um, and <laughs> I wasn't. I still went through my addiction. I ended up pregnant. Um, and I got to, like, give a family that didn't have, um, wasn't able to have children, a baby. And, like, they were just so, like, they love God so much. And, like, um, being able to do that really helped me. I got sober in that time, too. And I was going back to school. And, again, I 
my addiction like creeped up on me because I took my eyes off of God and wasn't like, you know, like had that attitude, like I don't need you now because I'm better. Um, and then I was going to go to Nevada and I wrecked my car and Linda popped in my head again because I had been praying like throughout that time because I was, I, I don't like how I am when I'm on my, in my addiction. I don't like how I treat people. I don't like like my children seeing that. Um, and I got a hold of Linda and I came back um, and I just like, I'm not angry anymore. Um, my relationship with God is amazing. Like I learned that like, if I take my eyes off of him, like my addiction will come back because the only thing that's going to take it away is him. Um, and so I want to be baptized to just show him that I'm serious this time. Hi, I am Jenna's mom, and earlier this year, she came out of her room with her Bible, and she was crying. Was, what in the world's going on? And she had decided that she was ready to be saved. She'd been reading about it, and so um, in January, she was, and then she had this list of things she wanted to do, and at the very top of that was get baptized, and I got baptized as a young child, and I didn't really know what I was doing, so I was really nervous about that, um, and so I've kind of realized now that I've kind of been the gatekeeper and God's really been talking to me too about this and you know if if I'm talking to her and I'm calling her you know to me don't get in the way and so she's been adamant about you know wanting to share her faith and, and get baptized and so I'm I'm just here to support her. Oh. Hi <laughs> I'm Gemma and earlier this year I got saved and I've been waiting a long time <laughs> for the next step, and this is it. Thank you. Actually, I'm gonna have all of you guys that are getting baptized, go ahead and come up, let's come on up here. If you guys wouldn't mind, just we'll gather right here. I, I, wanna, I wanna ask you guys to do something. I'm gonna ask you to stand, and we're gonna pray for them. Um, and then we're gonna make our way down to the beach, and we're gonna, We'll, we'll do all the, we'll celebrate all the baptisms down there but if you guys would kind of squeeze in here cuddle in real close there is a there's a significant battle going on and we've obviously I, I think several of us have felt it we've experienced it but you guys have experienced it over the course of even this week and and, and the weeks leading up to this this is a there's a spiritual battle for your soul that's taking place and you have an enemy and he's a dirtbag and he'll do whatever he can to distract you to destroy you to discourage you to fill fill your mind full of doubts and i want i want to encourage you real quick look at these people these are some of the finest warriors i've ever known and they've been through the thick and the thin they've been through some really really tough stuff in life and uh, they got your back. So don't do it alone. But even beyond that, the one who lives in you is greater than the one who's in the world. And never forget that. He loves you. He sees you. He has plans for you. And he lives in you. And he wants to, he wants to lead you and guide you through the course of everyday life. He is where your power comes from. In the name of Jesus, you are set free. In the name of Jesus, you are saved. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, we do this. So don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. So would you join me as we pray for them here, and then we're gonna then we'll head down to the down to the beach. Wow, God, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for the stories that we've heard. But God, we also understand that the stories are not that God, you are right now starting a new chapter and then the the things that are in the past god i pray that not only you would set them free from but they would set themselves free from god you know the you know the enemy and you know his tactics and he's going to try to mess with their mind and he's going to to try to deceive them he's going to try to bring up their worst moments and try to try to attach that to their identity and i pray that right now you would you would remind them that they are yours they are a child of god and you have paid the price for their sin you have you you, you have restored their relationship with you you have set them free and so god i pray that their identity would be found in you so god 
Go before them. You know the temptations that they are, they've yet to face. You know the, the obstacles in front of them. I pray that you would strengthen their faith and you would prepare them for battle. But remind them that the battle they fight is not just against flesh and blood, not just things they can see. But God, we, we have an enemy that works below the radar. And so God, would you strengthen their souls? Would you give their souls a craving for you, for your truth? And would you help them to identify the lies of the enemy? And God, I pray that they would choose to listen to your voice to your truth, to the words you speak to them. So God, I pray in Jesus' name, you would strengthen them, that you would go before them, and that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you uh, put this in for me? Yeah. It feels like jello. Absolutely, brother. Almost. Yes. Whoa. Yes, it is. Should be. Uh, yep, cool. And then uh, just dangle it right here. Should be good. Testing. Wait, say, say, say what I'm testing, saying? testing, testing. Cool, let's go. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So we're headed down to the beach. Um, that was awesome, guys. Some of those testimonies just were so powerful, each and every one. Just awesome to see what God's done in all of these people's lives. And so we're going down to the beach. It's a beautiful, cloudy-ish day. Um, but God just provides consistently. So we can't wait to just see these people's lives just continue to be changed by Jesus. So we're going to walk down there. We're going to watch some people get baptized. And we'll come back later. Feel free to drink. I should flip the camera and tell my story last year. That's how I had to go back for it. <laughs> last year, we almost had to die. To die. <laughs> Can you give Charlie the red knife? Yes, where is Charlie? Yes. Okay. Oh, Charlie. There he is. I'm supposed to give you this. Ooh. All right. It's a little clippy one. Nice. <laughs> um, what's that? I can speak into the mic? So just hold it like... like, like so are you mic. live? We're live right now. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for joining us online, guys. Oh, wait. You need to speak into oh, thanks for joining us online. You guys rock. Thanks for, thanks for sticking with us. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the stories, but I hope you're also taking it personal too and uh, think about how you can apply these stories to your life. What is your story? What God's doing in you? So thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Oh, you don't even have to turn it off, but... Yep, this is us. <laughs> oh, you just want me to hold that. Okay. Oh, no, no, just not like in this. the water. Not in the water. Oh, yeah, sure. Water. Water. All right. We'll find out if it's waterproof. I mean, um, uh, I mean, uh, All right, squeeze on down here. Come on close. Cuddle in. If you're getting baptized, if you want to head to the dock, we'll, hang, we'll kind of stage it up here on the dock. Like, so you don't have to hold it? No, you can clamp it. Can I just hold it? Sure, you can hold it. Because then I can get oh, yeah. it to it. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right, who's going first? You going first? Whatever. All right. Um. All right. I believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You commit to Paul and the rest of your life. Baptize you in the name of the Father. I just want to clip this right on your shirt so everyone online can hear you. Oh my gosh. We can literally just hold it up. We got to put that on? Huh? We got to put that on? You or you do? No. Are you trying to let you <laughs> I don't think the battery's that big. I don't feel like that's All right, you ready? Ready. Ready. Set. Okay, shoes? You, 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 you want to cuddle in? 
Okay, hey, miss. Things on. Okay, sure. I get actually. He wants me to hold it. Yeah. I'm grabbing one. So I don't drop it. So I'll I'll, in case I'll, I'll, I'll hold it for you. In case. Like it's not water, yeah. <laughs> That's why. Here, if you want to have questions here, and then I'll have okay. you back up and do it. Yeah. Be perfect. Okay. Now, we good? All right, here we go. JD's going first. <laughs> go ahead. JD, do you believe that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior? I do. And do you commit to following him for the rest of your days? I do. I can hear you. Just do you believe Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? I do. Do you commit to following the rest of your life? Yes. Awesome. Jesus Christ is the only Son of God, the only, the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through Him. Yes. And have you received the gift of grace? Yes. And the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Okay. Do you commit to daily submit and joyfully surrender your will to His and live for His glory every day? Yes. Okay. Let's do this. Aww.
Do you accept the, uh, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes, I do. All right. Thanks. Sarah, do you? Is it your hope to follow the Lord all the days of your life? It is. And commit his, your way to him and to fear him. Mm -hmm. it, is. it is my honor as my daughter to baptize you and, and, and walk with you as a sister in Christ. And someday in eternity, we'll get to be together because of what Christ did. So praise Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, Jenna. I'm super proud of you for making this decision. Mm -hmm. Are you? Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you commit to follow Him for the rest of your life? Yes. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. So they don't float away. All right. Fishing. Yeah. Because <laughs> they got white legs. <laughs> wait, wait, one, two. Go. Oh, perfect. All right. Patty, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. Do you commit to follow Him the rest of your life? Yes, I do. Awesome. Let's do this. You're next, Ed. <laughs> Sophia, do you <laughs> do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise to follow him for the rest of your life? I do. All right. Emily? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to follow him for the rest of your days? Yes. Awesome. That's fine. I told you one at a time. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ is a personal Lord and Savior. I do. Do you commit to following him the rest of your days? I do. All right, let's do it. Sign off or? Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed the stories. And uh, don't forget to make it personal. God is doing some incredible work in your life. And so proud of you. And uh, God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you.